Hello everyone and welcome back to another Using the Forge video. In this video I'm going to be talking about macros, what they are, and how to use them. So first I should introduce you to the concept of what a macro is. Essentially a macro is an equation you can type in that will actually pull information from your character sheets or your items so that you don't have to go back and uh, like do the math manually. So for instance if I wanted to pull a dexterity bonus I could write an equation that actually includes that in a macro. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now actually. So in the chat we actually can roll macros as if we we're just rolling dice. So we could do slash r d20 and it will roll a d20 for us. We can do something else like slash r 2d20 plus 5 and so on and so forth. You can roll dice pools by doing slash r and then typing in 1 or the number of dice you want to use square bracket the dice type and then it will roll that dice type. Now what we probably will want to do is actually pull information from our character sheets. So the way you can do that with the chat is if you're impersonating a character, you can actually reference them directly. So when I roll, let's say, a d20 and I want to add the dexterity bonus to them, I can look up the modified dexterity value, the modifier for the dexterity, by doing plus m at dex. Now this is basically how you would roll a modified value of dexterity, but sometimes things get a little bit more complicated such as armor class, and you don't want to be writing out this big equation every time. This is where constants come in. So a constant is basically a shortcut for looking up values or basically rolling those those values in a macro. So if you go to the system builder in the options and mods, you can see what constants are available in your system. In this case, you'll notice there's a list here with base armor, armor class, strength, dex, etc., etc. And they essentially boil down to just shortcuts for your macros. You'll notice that this armor macro is a bit large and we wouldn't want to be typing that every time. However, because this constant exists, I can actually just reference it by doing slash r ac. And you'll notice it pulls my armor class from my character. It's going on. So you'll notice that it says m at strength and how I mentioned it was modified earlier. So that's the modifier for strength. But if you wanted to get the raw value for strength, like what it appears like on your character sheet, you would want to do slash r at strength, str, which is the abbreviation. And this would pull your strength value automatically. So now that we can do that, what if we wanted a value that was modified and also added to the raw value? What I mean by that is in the case of, let's say, hit points or speed. Let's say speed. If I went to my speed stat here under counters and I added a modifier, let's say I wanted boost 5, I wouldn't want my macro to include this boost added to my speed value here. So how would I do that? Well, you would just not include the R or the M and just do at speed, which would give you the total value for your speed. And in this case, you'll notice my speed is actually modified. Now, it's important to understand that macros are best used for simple comparisons and making simple lookups, but they can be used for more advanced things like automation. You can do and use macros in the math tab, 
in the Actions tab, and even on Items in the case of adding item damage fields. You can add in a macro directly into one of these fields, and if it's used in like an action or something else, it will actually run the macro as if it was a normal lookup. Now, one thing to know is that you can actually write a full string out, like a full line of text, to reference something exactly. And this is how you would look up the maximum values or minimum values of a field. So in this case, I'm going to add my speed minimum to this dice roll. And now if I was to use this item's action, first I'd have to save it, and then I would go actions, roll, damage. And we'll actually roll my speed minimum, which in this case is actually zero. So you can do a lot with macros, and if you start combining them with different areas, you get some pretty interesting results. That's where I'm going to stop this video. I'll do future videos on where you can use macros and how to make them work because when you do system building and you start building actions they become pretty important. Anyways guys, thanks for watching as always and I'll see you in the next video.